Hey guys, what's up? So I recently bought a new MacBook Air and I did an unboxing on this channel of this bad boy hair. If you haven't seen that video, you can go check it out. I'll either put it in the description below or link it somewhere up here with one of those card thingies if I can figure it out. But yeah, so in that video, I mentioned that I was switching from a PC to a MacBook. So there was a little bit of a learning curve for me. So I kind of put together this video to help out anybody else that might be new to Mac making that transition. Or if you've had a Mac for a while, there might be some gems in here for you as well. But I've put together some tips and tricks that will help you get the most out of your Mac. So check it out. In the description tab below, I've also time stamped everything that we're going to be talking about so that you can kind of skip through this video and find what's most useful. So the first thing that I would advise everybody getting a new MacBook to do is update your software. So for whatever reason, even if you got a brand new 2020 MacBook that just came to your house today, chances are it's not updated with the latest software. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go into your settings and update that software. So how you do that is you click on the Apple logo, go down to about this Mac, and then you'll be able to see software updates. You click on that and you can update your software there. Software there. So it's going to take a little bit of time to do, but at least after that's done, you know that your brand new computer has the most up-to-date software so that it can be running well while you're using it. Okay, so the second thing you want to do is you want to figure out your trackpad. So under this, I know this is like tip number two, but they're like three tips in one here. You want to figure out the scroll direction, whatever you feel comfortable with. You also want to figure out how to right click and how to drag and drop. So I'll show you how to do all of those things here. So the first thing I'll show you is how to do right click. So right click is traditionally done two fingers like that but you can also change that to right corner or whatever works best for you so you want to go into settings trackpad and then in the point and click tap go down to secondary click and then choose whichever option works for you whether that's right corner left corner or two finger click and then while you're there just head over to the scroll and zoom tab and then change the direction of the scroll if that's something that you want to do if you're used to the other type of scrolling. I don't know why, but Mac, in all their wisdom, when they were creating these, these laptops, they did not turn on drag and drop as a default setting. So you have to go into your Mac and turn on drag and drop if that's something that you want to use. I found this out the hard way. I was trying to edit a video and could not drag for the life of me. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So you want to go back into your settings and then instead of going to trackpad, you want to go over to accessibility and then point of control and trackpad options. Then you're going to enable dragging. I leave mine on three finger drag, but while doing that, you're still able to drag the traditional way, just holding it down and dragging across. That basically covers the basics of the trackpad. Once you have the trackpad figured out, right click on as many things as you want to figure out all the hidden features behind everything. And you can pretty much explore your MacBook on your own and figure out the rest of the stuff. But I do have a couple more tips and tricks. So here we go. Number three, how to change the wallpaper on your MacBook. I know this might be super basic and some people might know how to do it and some people don't, but this is a really easy way to customize your MacBook. So what you want to do is when you're on the deck desktop, you want to just right click anywhere on the desktop. So scroll down to change desktop background. And from there, you can select any of the stock wallpapers that come with your MacBook. Just click on it and it will automatically change. If you don't like any of those, you can, go, you can go over to Google and just type in HD wallpapers and go to images. Then you can kind of just scroll through and select whatever image you like. When you find an image you like, just drag it over to your desktop. And from there, you can right click on it and use it as a wallpaper. So you have your image. Scroll down, right click, set, set desktop picture, and voila, you have yourself a new desktop picture. 
so number four is changing your pictures one your iCloud picture and two the landing page picture so your iCloud picture if you're new to if you're new to Apple you probably don't have an iCloud picture and I'll show you how to change that and then the other picture I'm talking about is when you log into your Mac the lock screen it for me the picture right now is a parrot but you can change that from the parrot to a picture of your face or whatever you'd like and I'll show you how to change them both so for the iCloud picture what you want to do is you want to go into settings you want to click on that icon of yourself and then choose a picture from your computer that you want to use and select it you can move it around if you want to drag it around now that we know how to drag and drop and just make it the right size and when you're happy with how the picture looks you select it and you're good to go the next thing you want to do is that lock screen picture you want to go into users and groups and you'll see the picture there beside your name you can edit that picture and it's basically the same process you go in and you choose a picture that you like from photos and then you can adjust it i'm just going to choose the same picture that i had uh, that i chose for the for icloud zoom in a little bit i like the way it looks select i am good to go to apply this change however i'm going to need it to click on the little lock at the bottom of the screen and type in my password to authenticate and that I'm the one actually changing the picture and then from there when I go back to my lock screen I'll have that picture changed. So number five is personalizing your doc. So the stock configuration has your dock at the bottom of the screen, but you can move the dock to anywhere on the screen that you'd like. And you can also remove things from your dock and add things to your dock as you please. And you can also have your dock hidden away so that when you want to actually access your dock, you just move the, the pointer over to where the dock would be and then it will pop up. This will save you some real estate on your screen. And I'm going to show you how to do all of those right now. So what you want to do is you want to go over to your dock, you want to right click on your dock and then go to dock preferences. When you go to dock preferences, you can either select whether you want your dock on the right, on the bottom or on the left. So select where you like it. I personally like having mine on the left. Another thing you can do is you can right click on the dock and you can hide the dock. So I prefer to have mine hidden so turn on hiding turn off hiding it's really simple to do that way the dock is this is gone when you're not using it you can also remove things by from the dock by just dragging them off the screen and you can add things to the dock by going into your launch pad and dragging something over to the dock like so Another thing you can do is just kind of rearrange things on your dock to suit your liking. So you might want something at the top or the bottom to the far left or right. So you just kind of drag it around and make it your own. Number six, battery percentage. So I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, but like on your PC, you used to be able to see the battery percentage in the bottom corner of the screen. But on your Mac, you just kind of see a picture of a battery. I personally don't find this useful or helpful. I would prefer to see the percentage sign. So in order to change that, what you want to do is you just want to go over to the battery. Then you just right click on it and click show percentage. Once you turn on show percentage right there, then now you have the percentage. My battery is at 47%. Number seven. So this is pretty useful just for adjusting your general settings. There are little things in here, little gems in here that you might want to change around just to customize your computer a little bit more and make it more your own. So what you're going to do is go into settings once again, system preferences and head over to general. And then here you can kind of just play around with stuff. You can get light mode, dark mode, auto mode, and just click on them. See if you like it. I know this is something that you were able to do when you just set up your computer. 
You can also change the highlight colors if you don't want them blue. You can change them to whatever works for your preferences. Um, another thing you can do is you can go down to default browser and you can change it from Safari to Chrome if that's something you're into. I personally prefer it as Safari just because it drains less battery. But yeah, just play around, see what you like, see what you don't like, and uh, make your computer your own. Number eight is hot corners. So I don't know if you guys have seen, I saw this on YouTube, on other people's YouTubes with people just showing this hot corners thing. And I thought it was pretty gimmicky, but I actually found some use for it. So hot corners is this thing where if you put your cursor top right, top left, or bottom left, bottom right of your screens, you're able to, uh, to like have different functions. So, how you access this is you go into your system preferences and from system preferences you head over to mission control and to the hot corners tab at the bottom and then you kind of just play around with it so you can have anything from like mission control application windows desktop notifications in all the screens so the only one i used is the bottom left and i use that for lock screen so whenever i put my cursor to the bottom left of the screen now my screen will automatically lock and require me to use my password to get back in like so see my screen is now locked and if i want to get back in i have to use my fingerprint boom so you can play around with that and see if it works for you. So number nine is file management. I find file management to be a little bit different on my MacBook than it was on my PC, specifically just the way it's set up. On your PC, you had that manila folder at the bottom of your screen that showed you where all your files were. On your MacBook, all your files can be found in the finder. So to access the finder, it's on your dock. It's the, the first thing on your dock if you haven't changed it. And that's where all your files are located. So when you open up your finder, I find that there's some basic things that are missing and I'm gonna show you how to get into them. So the first thing I find is that you don't have that status bar at the bottom and I'm going to show you how to get that. So go into view and then you want to go down to show path bar. When you turn on the path bar, what this essentially does is show you where you are, especially when you have a folder within a folder and you want to access it really quickly. This is the best way to do it. The next thing is that I don't have a lot of SSD, so I always want to know where I am with storage. So show status bar allows you to see exactly where you are with storage on your macbook when you need to back up and all of that good stuff okay so this next tip that i'm gonna show you is if you're like me and like to have a completely clear desktop as you can see right now i have one folder on my desktop but i'm gonna show you how to move it to finder so you open up finder and go over to documents in the sidebar I'm going to drag that folder over to documents so that it's no longer on my desktop. From there, I'm also going to put it on this sidebar. So from documents, I'm dragging it over to the sidebar and leaving it there. So that way I have easy access to it whenever I want. So if I close up Finder now and reopen it, that folder rack is on the sidebar so that I have easy access to it. This would be really useful if I had a whole bunch of documents and folders inside folders and I just wanted to access one really quickly but I wanted to keep my desktop space really clear. So another thing that might be different is properties. When you click right click on anything in PC you'll be able to access when you right click on anything and scroll down you can click on properties and in properties you'll see all the information about that file so on your Mac you can do the same thing but it's called get info so if you right click on any folder and then click get info it will tell you things like the date the file was created how much space the file is taking up on your computer and you can even like change the options of how to open this file in the future if that's something that you're interested in all right so 
Number 10 is uh, quitting and closing applications. So if you're used to the standard Windows setup, you just kind of have that X in the corner. You click the X and everything closes, right? Okay, so on Mac, it's a little bit different. Instead of just that X, you have the little red dot. But clicking on that red dot doesn't necessarily close the application altogether. It just kind of takes it off your screen for now, but it's still running in the background. I'll show you what I mean. So when you have an application on your computer, like I have Safari open here, I click that little red dot, but you can still see that there's a dot beside Safari on my computer because it hasn't fully closed. So what I want to do is I want to click on Safari and then go down to quit. When I click quit, you notice that there isn't a dot beside it, but pages still has a little dot beside it. So what I need to do is I need to go into pages and then quit pages so that it's not taking up RAM space while I'm using it. And it will always ask me if I want to save before I quit. So you don't have to worry about that. So another thing you can do is you can right click on it from the taskbar and quit that way. Or you can do command Q and you can quit documents that way. So as you can see now, there was nothing on my taskbar because I quit. So number 11 is using split screen and split screen is not something I use very often but I do find it pretty useful to know how to use so say for example you're trying to type something up and you want to type it from one thing to another or you just want to watch some YouTube while you type an essay or type an email whatever the case might be this is the best way to do it so at the top of your screen you know how you have that little red dot and that little yellow and green dot when you hover over, you'll either see enter full screen, tile window to left of screen, tile window to right of screen. You can click to tile to whatever side you'd like, and then you're in split screen mode. So right now, essentially, I'm watching some YouTube, hey Hollies, and I'm also making a Word document. Dope! So text-to-speech is a feature that I used to use a lot when I was in university, especially for proofreading my own work. So what would happen is if I'm reading something that I wrote, I'm going to read what I think I wrote. But when I use text, when I use text-to-speech, the computer kind of reads out exactly what's what, what I've written so I can hear where there's a mistake where I need to add a word or take out a word or if I've spelt a word completely wrong it will show me all of that and I can fix it. So for example, so this is how you turn it on. You want to go over to system preferences and then from there you're going to go into accessibility, scroll down to speech and then you can choose the voice you want. I personally just like Alex so I keep it on Alex and here you know that if you use option and escape on any highlighted text, you'll be able to use speech to text. So here I have a note and I'm going to highlight my note for you. I'm going to click options escape and my note's going to play. Subscribe. If you got this far into my YouTube video, I think you should subscribe to my channel, like this video and share. I would like to make it to 100 subscribers and 50 likes on this video. Thank you. You are awesome. Dope, dope. Yeah. So guys, that brings me to the end of the video. Comment below and let me know if you learned anything new from this video or if you knew all of these tips already. I hope you guys are enjoying your new MacBooks if you guys have new MacBooks. And if this video helped you in any way, share it with a friend and maybe it will help them too. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to you all. Have a great day. Take care now. Bye.